All right, we got two more sections to go through. The first one is relatively quick, very important, dealing with trolls. Uh, trolls and YouTube go together like tidy whities and jock itch. That's just the way it is. There's a, I have a hundred different theories on trolls, but you're going to deal with it. So you might as well know what to do. I keep some pretty simple rules. Uh, you cannot and will not make everyone happy. There are a lot of unhappy people in the world. They all have internet access and they feed on inducing and sustaining drama like vampires. Avoid entanglements as much as you can. The simplest and most effective way to deal with a troll is simply do not respond and delete the comment. That's the best thing. You know, it's an endurance game. He who blanks first loses. They'll keep going, they'll keep going. But you've got people that might come off kind of trollish, but they're just kind of, they've got an opposing view. So sometimes you got to test the waters and uh, do a little back and forth. But some people are just going to say some stuff. It's like, God, what crawled up his butt? <laughs> so I have, a, personally, I have a sliding scale on how I deal with trolls. But as far as advice goes, I would say, see it, just delete it. Someone spreading negativity, just remove it from your site. Now, there's, secondly, you got professional trolls, and they will try and snipe at any perceived weakness that they see that's personal. They can attack the way you dress, your hair, your weight, the way you talk, the way you look, uh, so on and so forth. Now, these are the guys that you just delete the comments without replying, and if they go on, on a marathon, uh, sometimes they will do a shotgunning method. Well, they'll just go through one video after the next, go down the list and post something about you. This guy's an idiot. This, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's, it's kind of, from a psychological aspect, it's kind of fascinating trying, watching this and, and just trying to picture this person and what's going on in their head and what's going on in their lives that make them behave like this. But in this case, you know, those types of guys, you just, just ban them. Uh, but one thing I learned is since YouTube and Google Plus is connected, you really want to first follow their profile and you, you click on uh, their little about tab or something like that on their name and it'll, you'll see a, a link to go to their Google Plus profile. So you got to go there and find the little spot to block the person in Google+. Then you go back and you block them in YouTube. Because what I was finding was I was blocking uh, crazy people in YouTube and they were still replying. It's like, how the hell are these guys getting through? That's because I didn't block them in Google+. So you can, st apparently you can still, I don't mess with Google+, that much, but apparently you can still comment on videos through Google+. And I don't know if that just blocks them from you or if it blocks them from where everybody can see it. But either way, even if it's just for you, it's fine because that way they're not sucking you into a negative state of mind, which is their whole freaking goal. They see you, maybe they think, uh, I don't like this guy, I don't think he should have the subscribers he has or he should be getting the attention he's getting, so I'm going to do my best to tear him down. Fine, whatever. Uh, I think most of those types of people need to figure out what's making them unhappy in their lives and fix it. But they're out there. There's, there's a lot of them. So just like I said earlier in the video, you're going to have people hate you one way or the other. No matter how great you are, how much you help people, whatever you do, someone's going to hate you. Just accept that and deal with it the best you can before you get started. Okay, the last section is probably got about 10 things. Uh, I took a lot of notes on this because this is something that a lot of people want to do, and that is be a gear reviewer. So I'm kind of like, I do a little bit of everything, but I do a lot of gear reviews because I like doing them. I like testing stuff. I like finding out what works, uh, what's worth the money, and make recommendations to people accordingly. 
a lot of people want to be gear reviewers for the free gear. Uh, that takes a while. You know, that might take you a year of buying stuff yourself before you start getting any free gear. And then there's not any real guarantee that that'll happen. Uh, there's a couple companies that you know understand the power of YouTube that hand it out pretty freely, but not everybody. <clears throat> but here's my complete set of rules for being a gear reviewer. Biggest thing about these rules is you cannot break them because the second you do, you're done. You've lost all credibility and no one's gonna trust a word that you say and therefore you're pretty much wasting your time reviewing stuff if you compromise your credibility. First of all, never promise a company anything in exchange for gear to review. Never promise a positive review. Free gear is not worth the fallout if people think you're pimping a product for a company. Only promise to be fair. If the company wants a positive review, don't walk, run. It's not worth the headache. Just say sorry, uh, I'm gonna call it like I see it. Now, if you are just in it to get the free gear, it's you're not helping anybody because then you're just telling, and that's especially annoying when you see a gear review and they're getting a lot of stuff and everything seems to be great. Everything they review has got nothing wrong with it and this thing is great and they come off like a commercial. People new that are still naive to getting into how things work on the internet will still trust that review and make a bad purchase. So you got to be careful with that. It's, uh, it's a responsibility to be fair and to be honest. Uh, if you respect your viewership, uh, you need to tell them the truth. If at all possible, show the testing. I've seen many videos, uh, some from channels much bigger than mine, where all you see is a couple seconds here and there of use. It's like, I, I use this for three months. And you see like swipe, swipe, cut, cut. Uh, I don't know, throw it against a tree or something. And then we're going into the specs and all that stuff. And the, the knife looks like it just came out of the box. Uh, that's not a review. That's a commercial. People will say you sold out. Another thing is avoid. I haven't seen a lot of these lately, but when I first started, I used to see a bunch of these. I call them tabletop hand reviews. And a tabletop hand review kind of looks like this. Hey guys, it's Chris from uh, TabletopHandDemos.com. I got this uh, really cool knife I want to tell you about. Now this knife is so sweet that I had to f name it after a, a, a chick. And, and the name that I came up with is Jessica. Now let me tell you all about Jessica. I have done so much bushcraft with Jessica. I've split wood, I've, I've made feather sticks. It did all those things really, really good. It could chop, takes an edge. Uh, works really, really good in, my, in the field. Uh, just trust me on that. Uh, but other than, yeah, I couldn't get my camera out there. And so anyway, I would just, uh, I wanted to do this tabletop demo and tell you how good it worked in the field and so on and so forth. So definitely go pick one of these knives up because they are just awesome. And that is my tabletop review of Jessica, the BK7. So yeah, that's pretty much what a tabletop hand demo review is. And I've seen quite a lot of them. Problem is they, they bear no weight uh, because you're, we're basically what, going on your word that you actually did these things and all that stuff. Granted, there is a, such a thing as edited for time, overwhelming people, opportunity, so on and so forth. But if you're going to review stuff, you should not just review it, but you should demonstrate it in some way. Uh, unless it's something that, I don't know, I'm sure there are some things that don't require demonstrating things, but knives that are supposed to do certain tasks, yeah, you should definitely do that. The other problem with the hand demo stuff is you immediately take personality out of it. You're just a voice and a pair of hands and some knives. 
No one really knows who you are. No one can either like you or dislike you. Maybe that's the goal. I don't know. Uh, cut back on the trolls or something like that. But you know, if you're going to put yourself out there, put yourself out there. Don't just put your hands out there. Uh, I just think it's silly. I advise people against it. Uh, get in front of the camera. And you're going to have a growth period to where you become comfortable in front of the camera. You look at my earlier stuff, it's kind of monotonous and, uh, hey, it's Chris, prepare my one, I want to tell you about it. And I wasn't really just like letting it all hang out there and saying what's on my mind, basically. Uh, it's, it's like learning curve, learn what works. And once I started doing more of that, more people started subbing, more people started watching. If you got a product and it fails during testing, you are honor bound to report it and you need to detail exactly how it happened. Don't just say this thing sucks just because it failed. Uh, you need to give that feedback that back to the company. How they respond to that feedback determines whether or not you should ever deal with that company again. Uh, if or yeah, deal with them in the future. If they pull the product and prove a flaw like Schrade has done several times on, uh, losing my screen here, on things that I tested, well that's a good thing. That means that you are making a difference with the product. They're taking your input to heart and making it better. I've also heard, uh, I mean in the past, back when I was had time to watch videos instead of make videos, I've heard like Adam from Equipped Endure say that, you know, he reported something failed and that the uh, company's got like really upset with him about it. And it's like, well, what's going on? What did you think was going to happen? Uh, you make a claim with a product that either lives up to that claim or it doesn't live up to that claim. And if it's not living up to that claim, it's up to you to fix it. Do you really want? that stuff out in the hands of people if it's failing. You know, sometimes it can be just, it could be a fluke. You know, I saw a picture of a broken BK9 once. Blew my mind, but could have been, a, you know, the guy in the heat treat booth was sick that day. I don't know, stuff happens. But that's also why companies have warranties. So if a company was smart, what they would do is like, okay, maybe they're send it back. Let us look at it. Let's let us send you a brand new one. Repeat the test. Some some companies think that they are buying commercial time from reviewers in exchange for free gear. So you have to be very very clear when with companies when you deal with them. Now, what if uh, you get something and you hate it, like before you ever do the video? You got two choices. Either give it a chance to prove itself or do not do the video. Why? Because you are beginning with a negative bias. Example, a uh, video I posted today on the Through Night TN 4A flashlight. When I first got it, uh, I was like, I don't know, man. This thing's like fat and all that. So I was a little worried because I liked everything from through night up to that point. But then I popped batteries in it and took it out in the dark and I was like, holy crap, this thing's awesome. You know, pocket, you know, pocket size throw monster. So I gave it a chance to prove itself. Other ones, like uh, example, I like tops a lot, but one time I borrowed somebody's uh, Servtac 7 and I just slammed on it the entire video. I ended up taking that video down because hindsight 2020, that didn't really look good on me. Uh, the, the big thing is, if you absolutely hate something, but it's not breaking or something like that, you shouldn't do the video. You should not let something that is your personal taste and use the power of your video camera to do harm to a company. It's like, okay, well that's, it's personal taste, but if I sit here and say how stupid a design is, you know, that's, that's really not fair. So it's, you got to be careful. Uh, if you see something that could be a safety issue, you better speak up. 
you, know, you owe it to the viewers to do that. Biggest thing is you can't be responsible for ferreting out all the bad products in the world. You just can't. Because frankly, there are more bad products than good products. And if your channel is full of you bashing the products that you don't like, uh, how many companies do you think are going to want to work with you? Because they don't know. Maybe it's something that you would really like, but all they see on your channel is, this thing sucks, this thing's a piece of crap, uh, I don't like this color, they should do this. They're not. So you got to be fair. Now, if you have a sharp eye and if you've watched many of my videos, there are some videos here and there that you're like, hmm, what's going on here? Because I call them, my, I always forget that, I think Jeffrey's on, I call them Jeffrey's on uh, gear reviews. Because it reminds me of that uh, Air Force pilot in, in the first Gulf War that the Iraqis put on TV and he's like, we need, the Americans are bad and we need to get out of this area, blah, blah, blah. And my, my reviews kind of came off like that. And here's why, I didn't like it. I didn't like it, but I couldn't honestly say there was anything wrong with it. It was just uh, a, big, a big difference in taste. So what I have to do with the video is show the good, with the bad, it's like, okay, this is the good points, uh, but I don't like this, but quantify it. It's just my taste. Unless it's being billed as something like uh, a bushcraft knife or something like that. It just doesn't have the right features. So you gotta, you just, you have to be careful with what you say and how you say it. Uh, don't promise anything to any companies, uh, say the truth. But again, if, if it's just something that you just don't, it's like, I hate this thing. This is not for me. It doesn't mean it's not for someone else. So if you don't see a major flaw with it that needs to be pointed out, just, you know, let someone else review it. Uh, go on something else. Biggest thing you need to remember as far as doing good points and bad points and doing the video is you're giving it a fair assessment and that is critical feedback to the company which hopefully, if you've established your reputation, hopefully they will take that to heart. And it's like, people will be like, well, what do you know about knives? You're not freaking Les Stroud or something like that. Uh, testers handle a lot of stuff. We, we tend to be picky about the stuff that we like because we've tried so many things. Uh, we know how these different features work. We know how these different features feel. So it's, it just comes down to an experience thing. It's like, you know, I think a knife of this type should have a different balance, a different grind, because I've used so many and I, I've seen so many times how these different features perform. So that's where the experience of a gear reviewer comes in handy uh, as a feedback mechanism to the companies because you got someone that hasn't handled all these knives, they may pick that knife up and think, wow, this is the best knife ever. Well, they don't know what they don't know. They don't know that there's something else out there that works better because they haven't handled it. That's where we come in. Another warning as a gear reviewer, uh, you will tend to build relationships with companies. And when you do, uh, people will say you sold out. Unless it's like something that like ev most people like. It's like, oh yeah, this is the greatest. So no one will say a word. But if it's a company to where that caters to a large demographic, uh, like trade. Trade makes, you know, this many products, only about this many really apply to, you know, this channel. So you got the people out there that look at all these other products and they don't like them. And they're like, oh, well, if you like this company, even though you're only pushing these products, then I know that they're crap. So that must mean, since I know they're crap, that means you sold out or you're on the payroll or something like that. Uh, it's gonna happen. You just need to remind them that uh, there's laws about that. So like if you're getting paid by a company to promote it and say it good things about it and you don't disclose that, like these are paid compensated actors or blah, blah, blah. 
uh, you can get in big trouble for that. It's against the law. So I don't know if the cynics out there knew that, but it is. So when you get your tinfoil hats out and the conspiracy start, and, you know, so-and-so's paid off, probably isn't. If he's not saying he is, if not, he's breaking the law. So you got to keep that into consideration. It's just going to happen. Uh, you know, through night's another one. And the, what trade and through night have in common is that they understand the power of YouTube as far as, you know, how do I spend my adver advertising dollars wisest in order to get my product in front of the most am amount of people for the least amount of money? Well, they understand that passing them out to YouTube reviewers, real world people, to test them out in viral marketing, it, that's like the YouTube is like the best type of advertising there is. And yet there's still companies that, you know, even at my level and maybe even people higher than me, they don't, they're like, oh, I'm not going to give you anything. You know, uh, I had an, I had a instance with a company that I've sold a lot of their stuff and I still push their stuff. And they're just like, uh, no, it's not worth it. No, if, if, you, if you Google this knife, there's 15,000 results. So they don't understand that results don't mean as much as hearing that it's good from somebody whose opinion you trust. So Shrade, through night, they understand that formula. That's why you see so much Shrade and through night out there on uh, the reviews. It's not because there's anything shady going on. It's just they just get it. They know how it works. Uh, a lot of companies don't yet. They, they look at it as if I give this thing to this guy, then it's costing me money. Well, yeah, if he doesn't have the view count. You know, and there's people I know. Uh, I'm, I got friends that own big stores, uh, companies and all that. And if they sometimes they see... Uh, me do a review and I say okay I got this from this company and then Joe Schmo that just started his YouTube channel uh, yeah send me one I want to do a review on it well you haven't established your audience yet that's what I goes back to what I said earlier is like you're gonna spend your own money for about a year if you want to be a gear reviewer you have to establish yourself before it is worth it to the company to give you that item See, there has to be a return on investment. And the return on investment for a company giving a piece of gear to a YouTuber with a large audience is they know 15,000 people at least are going to see it. I mean, that's... And then when you calculate the cost of the product, if you put that in any other form of ad dollars, it would cost a thousand times more. So... Hopefully that kind of explains the whole dynamic with getting stuff from companies and why some are like this and why some are like that.